Hello all you lovely people, this is uh, Angel here with the Let's Play of TFTC Reimagined and today we're going to finish Battle 1. Uh, but before we do that, um, I haven't been in here for a few missions so let's see what we've got. We've got a few more models now, we've got the TIE Interceptor, uh, Bomber and Assault Gunboat now. Uh, these models, uh, the, the, the larger versions of these uh, pictures you're seeing are updated, at least the TIE versions are for 1.2 uh, because of all the new TIE models that have been replaced. Um, and uh, yeah, a little bit of discrepancy here between this and one of the other missions because I had to redo Battle 1 Mission 2 uh, when I did that video. Um, because when I did that video originally, it did not record everything, so I had to go back and re-record it because I'd already done Battle 1 Mission 3, but I had to do it with a new pilot, so my score has actually been inconsistent between Battle two, uh, Battle 1 Mission 1 and Battle 1 Mission 3 because I had to go back to an old uh, new pilot and then skip on to uh, the other missions. But uh, yeah, we, we've got more emails now. Um, we, yeah, good old Basil Forlux. We miss you, man. You did. You died for the Empire. At least I think he died. And yes, ev even in the Star Wars universe, you get suspicious spam links. But anyway, let's get on with the mission. So I want to talk about these... Um, these animations you see just before the briefing plays. Um, this was a very late addition to TFTC, like we're talking a few weeks before release of 1.0. Um, I asked Jeremy if it was actually possible to basically have a unique intro, uh, cutscene intro per mission, because all you had was the stock um, animation cutscene uh, where you go into your briefing. And we couldn't use that because that was the Rebel briefing, so I needed I needed something, and there was uh, the original TFTC uh, cutscene which basically showed something similar to what you're seeing, uh, it just showed a TIE fighter rolling around with some uh, Orberish text and uh, like a wireframe, and so I took inspiration from that, but I, I couldn't use that because I didn't have the permission of the original uh, author of that video to do that. Once a large enough so I had to sit down and think about creating a new one. Now I am not by any means a professional animator or Photoshop artist. In fact I didn't really know how to do much Photoshop or anything like that at all until the start of this year, which is well, I say this year. 2021. Start of 2021. Be prepared. Um, but TFTC kind of forced me to learn. Um, although there are people in the community who can, who can definitely do this stuff better than I can, um, we're all busy and I, I like to be able to do stuff myself if I can. Um, and so I, I made the effort to learn. I already mentioned in the very first Let's Play video during the intro that I'd made the TIE Fighter logo animation, that took me a week, and that was the first bit of animation work I ever made. But these, this, this was something new. This was something different. So I took a screenshot of the original uh, briefing room. Well, not the briefing room. The, the sort of the battle selection room in Tie Fighter. So you have your officer there. The the two sort of uh, white um, dots where the holographic interface is coming from is where you would select your battles. Large enough to begin the fight. This serves a purpose of basically allowing us to have this little old screen from the original TIE Fighter just to make it feel a bit more authentic. And Omega will jump in. But uh, yeah, I, I had to spend a few days tweaking and tinkering and finding out how to do certain things and to figure out how I wanted this to go. I knew I wanted to base it off the original animation that I mentioned, but I wanted it to be based on each mission. Um, so it was unique to the mission. Uh, so Jeremy uh, managed to make a hook that basically allows us to say what cutscene you're going to use when the mission starts. And so, yeah, uh, that, that's what I eventually came up with. it. And I've made 125 of those little animations. I, I made a template, and then it's basically a case of just swapping out uh, certain files, and uh, mostly the ship file stuff, and then all the text. But everything else is the same. Um, making the holographic interface, I just... So one second, it's very cool seeing all these assault gunboats. Uh, again, Imperial Might. We're going to stomp on these guys this time. But anyway, back to the animation stuff. 
uh, yes, the hologram bit at the very end, that was the hardest for me to figure out because it, it was a sort of funky graphical effect that, uh, how do I go about doing this? And basically I came up with um, just a lens flare effect of sorts uh, in Photoshop, uh, Adobe After Effects uh, to make the sort of holographic light and then a bit of static uh, overlaid on um, the sort of purplish screen and then it sort of folds into the briefing but uh, all the stuff at the beginning the map stuff again I, it's that aspect of the original TIE Fighter that X-Wing Alliance wouldn't normally let you have but I, I, I managed to get that little aspect in via these little animations it, it's not much it just adds flavor but it helps make it feel that this is TIE Fighter and so I went to, through each of the original uh, battle displays the galaxy map in the original game and uh, I made sure I knew where the red box was going so I could animate the red box and recreate it myself and it tells you what battle uh, name this is or um, mission name it is and then it switches to I, I usually picked a ship or a station that I felt was most relevant to the mission at hand, so in this case it's the uh, the Lulzla. We're destroying the Lulzla, so it's a l the Lulzla that comes up. I had to go through and record uh, ships spinning about, and then sort of take that, uh, take a save that, and then in Photoshop I took a wireframe uh, version of the model. I can just use the OPT editor, which is the editor we use to look at the uh, um, this, uh, the, the models of the game. You can put a wireframe version on and I just took screenshots of that, put a green overlay on it and then just sort of manually added um, sort of uh, uh, what's the word? Diagrams if you will. Uh, schematics, that's the one of, of the ship and their technical readouts and all the Orberesh text is legitimate text. I typed out, basically it starts off with a description of the ship and then the second page is basically the statistics of the ship, so, you know, armaments, crew, speed, shields, all that sort of stuff. It's all legitimate. If you were to translate that back into English, it would all make sense. At least I hope it would anyway. Whether anyone's bothered to try and do that, I have no idea. I don't know if that's uh, something anyone would be interested in doing. I've got a starship on me. This is four. So yeah, that's the animations. And I realise I've just spent five minutes talking about the animations and not this mission at all. Uh, so, so let's do that quickly. Um, we've already quickly jumped in and stomped on the slicer. I really wanted to do that. Like I said, Imperial Might, we're coming in, and the slicer is there to kind of act as a buffer, but against, what is it, 24 gunboats? Um, yeah, it's just absolutely stomped upon. You just come in and crush it, and it's great to, to see that. Um, it can still do damage. If you start firing at it, it's going to start throwing uh, most of its lasers at you, and if you don't move, it will kill you. Um, but if you time it right, yeah, stomped. And then you have to open up a hole in the minefield. Probably the most irritating thing here is the uh, mines which shoot missiles when they die. You have to shoot them in a very specific angle to stop that from happening. Um, if you don't, then it immediately launches a missile as soon as it's destroyed. That was always a pain in the arse in the original. Uh, I toned it down a little bit for Reimagined, so there was more Type 1 mines than Type 2, but um, yeah, I still get them in anyway. And then you're just basically dealing with the, the remaining Rebel fighters and uh, just going to town. The only other potential danger which I added for 1.2, there's a wave of X-Wings which come in and attack the assault transports, but because there's so many of them, it's they, they did no essentially no damage to them, they were quickly wiped out, so I massively increased the number of reinforcing X-Wings that came in to attack the assault transports, and some of them will go down now, so yeah, and it, it just it makes the fight feel a bit more difficult, but otherwise this is a much easier mission compared to, certainly I think the original. And you can see the loss is already destroyed, lovely debris field. Still gotta capture the commander. And even with these lovely new Lambda models, it still feels rather difficult to hit these things. Weird hitboxes. Yeah, we've got the Lulzler's Commander. Got a huge bonus score for this mission. Um, I, I, for most of the end of battle missions, I try to give you a huge bonus score. Um, the secret order ranks are tied to your bonus score. 
and uh, in trying to balance the secret order, when when the secret order ranks are triggered, uh, I had to go through each mission and f basically add up the total amount of bonus points per mission and then add it to an aggregate score and then figure out where the most appropriate place would be to trigger secret order ranks. Um, and I had to kind of guess this because not, not everyone's going to complete all the uh, objectives, including the bonus ones. Um, so I had to kind of had to figure out a, a rough working average and go from there. But there's enough bonus points that you can trigger all the ranks. Not in Reimagined anyway. There's, there's only six ranks in Reimagined because Reimagined is not complete yet. As then it goes to Battle 8. TFTC Classic, uh, you can go all the way to rank 9 uh, of the Secret Order. And yeah, I, I think the only the, the first rank is the one I really wanted to try and trigger on Better One Mission Two. It doesn't happen all the time, but for the most part, you will get your first Secret Order rank on Battle One Mission Two. Um, I don't want it to trigger in Battle One Mission One because you don't get your Secret Order uh, um, first Secret Order mission until Battle One Mission Two. Um, well, certainly you don't interact with the Secret Order guy, and that's also why I didn't give any bonus points at all in the training missions because I don't want it to end up triggering something and it gets harder and harder to predict where it would be the best place to trigger that first rank uh, trying to predict players behavior so just mopping things up here love the backdrop in this mission again um, Ilios, uh, the Embers of the Empire chap, the guy who does a Secret Order voice, uh, did a lot of the work of the um, getting our, our backgrounds to be as pretty as they are. So, some of the background work, uh, particularly planets, comes from other artists with their permission, but all the nebula skyboxes, uh, the wraparound nebulas, are his work. And in version 1.2, we, um, we we redid all of these nebulas, or he redid uh, the nebulas, so that... Uh, yeah, it feels a bit more softer, a bit more natural, because some of the nebulas were a bit intense, shall we say. I think Battle 3 was a particular notorious uh, intense uh, nebula. I've seen people complain that, you know, oh, this is too colourful, Star Wars isn't like this. It's, um yeah, I guess. Uh, there's a lot of... Most of Star Wars just takes place in the black of space, but... The thing is, there's a gameplay um, thing in here about as well, that it's harder to see ships against the black of space. From a gameplay point of view, if you have something in the backdrop, it's easier to see the silhouette of a ship. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fine balance. I tried to make sure that at least 40 or 50% of all the missions, in, certainly in Classic, uh, take place on a black star field rather than a nebula. So, you know, trying to shift things up, but I think the shift, personally, I think the nebula adds to uh, the atmosphere of a mission. But anyway, there we go. Second secret order rank. We are advancing in the eyes of the Emperor. And our first mission cutscene. It would be really nice if we could remake all these cutscenes. I mean, Ota King is remaking the intro for us, but. Uh, uh, I'm not exactly holding out hope that we'll, he'll remake all the cutscenes, and considering the amount of time it's taken to just to redo the intro cutscene, it would be years uh, before these could be remade. Um, the only thing we did do was remaster the music. Uh, James Lawney Stringer, or James Stringer, known as Lawney on Get Off My Lawn channel, you should check it out, um, remastered all the music on this um, so that the, they sound consistent with the rest of the music. And just one thing I want to point out, these two characters, I know that's Mon Mothma there, it's just my, in my head, I always thought they looked a bit like Kirk and Spock. Maybe it's just me, I've never been able to get out of my head that those two guys in the cloaks there looked a bit like Kirk and Scott, and I say guys because one of them I think is Mon Mothma, not a guy, so. But there we go, our first medal. And also our first very noticeable bug that we've not been able to fix here, and this is it. This is uh, this is our secret order rank and the medal overlaid on each other. Uh, that shouldn't happen, but we haven't been able to basically stop that from happening. The reason that happens is because we were awarded both things at the same time. 
Um, it's annoying, but, you know, there you go. Has now finally but yeah, eliminated. battle one is complete. Successfully. D34 is secured. Javan sector is safe. And we killed a lot of things. Uh, but let's let's take a look at the private room again before we uh, wrap this up. Um, got promoted, sub-lieutenant now. And let's take a look at the medal case and there we go. There's our medal of redemption. There's our tattoo. All looking marvelous. And any more emails? Ah, just one. Ah, we're going to the v uh, VSD protector. To a guy called Harkov, I think, is in charge of that. I wonder, I wonder if he's uh, going to be a, a decent admiral or something more. Well, we'll find out in battle two, won't we? So, uh, until then, all you lovely people, take care and good hunting.